this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, we are going to motivate you for the new year, and I'm going to slap the shit out of myself. Trey. Yo, this podcast, you're going to have to get your shit together after this one. <laughs> Facts. Yeah, create your own environment, get your shit in order. I think uh, anyone who's on the fence of doing the I want abs, listen to this podcast and wait till the ending. There's some like nice cinematic, you know, great montage stuff with, <laughs> you know, Corey G and the whole crew. <laughs> oh, man, this was a fun show. And it's uh, live on Twitter if you guys want to check it out. All right, let's roll the show. Roundtable podcast. We are live. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small arms, Danny. At Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself. Cole Susak, the Roundtable Podcast, brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. We have the 2023 I Want Abs Contest going on right now. If you would like to win a Cadillac Escalade ESV, 5G in cash, or a Gucci watch, that's the top three. Uh, you can go to MaxEffortMuscle.com and check out the contest uh, rules and regs. Also brought to you by Sam Adams. Drink you a Sammy A, Tall Boy 22. I used to go to Deuce Deuce all the time back in the day. With the Vegas Stars, you all know about that, mm -hmm. and uh, it's good for you on the weekends. All also, right. Also yeah. brought to you by the Arms Army. Oh, okay. Yeah. Making a big yeah. comeback. Making a comeback. Okay. There's something yeah. going on right yeah. now. I yeah. think uh, you know there's something going on in our swole ship that we got going on. So <laughs> swole ship. Yeah. The Death Stars. You know. <laughs> the yeah. Death Star. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? We uh, are seeing Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're uh, reviving the Arms Army, and okay. it's like all Star Wars. Things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I saw watched. the rebranding on on Instagram. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I saw. Star, I think I watched Star Wars when I was like yeah. probably nine. Yeah. yeah so uh, yeah, just so just a free shout out. Uh, tag us in your arm pics and we might up. It's yeah. arms of the so. Z. So well, yeah. make sure you <laughs> with the Z. Well, and for you guys that aren't aware, we are back live on uh, Twitter as we're yep. shooting this right now. So shout out to all the Twitter homies, and we have like basically a Twitter dawn with us now. We do Web three Trayvon Dier. I can't. Call, you know. Trey Speed, better known, yeah. you know, in the local market, Trey in Speed. The local market. <laughs> Trey, 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 what do the NFT people call you? Do they have a nickname for you? I just call you King Trey. Just Trey, Trayvon Trayvon. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Here's what someone, I know. Someone um, randomly, so when I posted my my deadlift the other day, mm -hmm. someone randomly commented on it and was like, yeah, this looks like Corey G's setup. Yeah, yeah, oh, I did see that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, like, shout oh, out. Shit. Shout <laughs> out. You know, this is what I know about Trey. When he's anything Web3 and I see him on Twitter and then he goes with the zip up with no shirt underneath. I know shit is going down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know. Like, I didn't hear from him for a little while, but I was like, Trey's good. Trey's good. <laughs> so, all right. First of the year, a lot of New Year's resolutions, goals being thrown all over the place. Obviously, for our, our normal audience and all our new tweet impressions, they're, they're paying attention. Cole, what's some good advice, which I wrote about today a little bit, and some of this was stuff that me and you have talked about most recently, but a couple of things like to keep people on track. It seems like a tall mountain, but like small winds. Like give, give some just yeah. Well, some of that some of that. Talked about this in the AF minicast yesterday. Yeah. Which shout out Corey G exclusive on yeah, that. Yeah, you know, love the AF amazing minicast. content. <laughs> but uh, so many honestly, shout outs. honestly, like minimizing the variables, like not yeah. overdoing it, not trying to change a lot of shit. Just having a consistent schedule, consistent time frame, consistent fucking meals and shit like that. Yeah, that you're not changing it. I'm not changing what I eat when I train, what I train, what I do, anything yeah. like that. Also, huge thing I've been doing is I've been eliminating all the shit that's, like, cluttering my mind for no reason. Mm, I like that. Like, so, at the end of 2022, while I was on, like, you know, in New York with Michaela's family, I fucking went hard and deleted, like, all the spam stuff that comes in my emails, uh, went back through, like, my camera roll, deleted a bunch of random shit I didn't, like, need to see mm -hmm. just so I can keep the inspiration fresh. Also developed a nice note-taking system, too, like a uh, daily journal, oh. stuff like that. So, so yeah, so less clutter. Yes. I like that, too. Um, I really got good at my email. I just don't read it. Nice. <laughs> Uh, how many are in your box again? Like 400,000. 400, Don't email me if you want to get a hold of me. Like I'm not just saying. joking. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not joking at all. <laughs> you need to unsubscribe, homie. Yeah, yeah. A couple, yeah, not the email newsletter. It's Make sure you're on that. Yeah, yeah. Too far gone at that point. All right. Yeah. There's, there's a couple things in. I want to shout out to you, Cole, because you're right there. Yep. So I, I wrote about three things that you need to fall in love with uh, to help with your fat loss process. Nice. Now, I don't use the word journey. Or grind, because I think it's overplayed, right? So I would not use those when I talk about this. One of them, though, is mindset, right? Because Cole was squatting the other day, a shitload of weight. He racked it, and he goes, 
that's because I've been eating vegetables for four days straight or some <laughs> shit like that. But what, what, I, what he always does when he gets back on track, he tells me how much he loves vegetables. Because yeah. whether he doesn't love vegetables or not, I don't know. Because I've only known Cole that Cole loves vegetables. So my, my thought process when I was writing this this morning, I was like, most people are so upset that we're taking pizza away from them. That they're, and they're looking at the glass half empty. You yeah. are glass half full, which we all are. But the reality is you need to like flip it to that way and say, I get to eat this. Now, how, how much better can I make that? Not, I want to eat that. I should be able to eat that. I'm entitled to eating that. That shit doesn't fucking work. And if you're always brain, if your brain's always towards lack thereof, you're fucked. So if you're always worried about what you can't have, this goes towards so many different things, but especially in this mindset. So that was the first one. Number two was the small wins is that the mountain just keeps getting bigger. You get to one spot and you want to get to the next spot. It never really changes. So even celebrating things on a, on a, on a, in a small way in your head or however you reward yourself, I think is really important because people are concerned what they can't have. Then they can't get there fast enough. And then the last one is they're not really thinking about like what happens if they quit. And then before you know it, they're just done. And we're at day four. Mm -hmm. I would say some people's resolutions are already over. 100%. You know what I mean? And so maybe there's a few things that with that that you guys can kind of expand on. But I think like these are – I was trying to think of like three things that like really fucking get to me. And one of them is I always go like what happens if I – like what's the alternative? Not try to be healthier? Not try to look better? Not yeah. try to get stronger, not be a dog. Yeah, I don't even understand. Well, that. I think it's really impactful whenever you <laughs> tell the people how, that, like, how not to get abs, like yes. how not to get in shape. Yes, like if you break that down, that's really impactful. How not to get abs is do well. Most people are just do what you're currently doing, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, your body is. It's hard to be. It's hard to not seek comfort. I mean, this is like so so all over in the media with David Goggins and all that. But your body wants comfort. And even if you're motivated and crazy like me and all of you guys, it's like it's still going to battle it every day. So what, I think when some people hear these things, whether it's a vision board, whether it's motivational material, whether it's journaling it's or, you know, tweeting back and forth with fucking like motivational people, reading people's threads like you need all of it. Mm -hmm. You need all of it to be successful, in my opinion. Danny, For you sure. look like you want to say something. You're burning over there. I like that. Huh. That dude. Yeah, that's pretty wet. It looks good. Shout out, Andy. yeah, yeah. Shout out Notre Dame. Um, <laughs> I, I <laughs> well, two things. I like Notre Dame. They drink Guinness. <laughs> they do. Shout out Montana, Joe Montana. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I got the, I got his rookie card, bro. Dude, Go that's wet. Yeah. I, I know. I, I know. I didn't bring it in show yeah. to you. Go I, I have a Christmas ornament of Joe Montana. No, oh, <laughs> my, I think my brother got it for me last year. Yeah, that's awesome. That's pretty, pretty wet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Danny, could you give me some definition on when you say it's pretty wet? I mean, if you say like it's it's cool, it's tight. Oh, okay, it's okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, good. What could be meant? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, things, continue. Right? Yeah, good talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> put out Uber Dictionary. Um, the first thing I, th I mean, you were talking. I, I just was thinking about like when you're talking about mindset and like reframing it to like something that's actually gonna be positive. Yeah. But then the the other thing I was thinking about primarily is, I, I go back to James Clear a lot, and I was just talking. Oh yeah. D Deegan Shout out James him. Clear. Yeah, shout out whenever you're watching this. Yeah. Um, is is like creating your own environment for what, what works for you or what yeah. is going to work for you. Because if you're, you know, I was just talking to Kyle about this too. You know, if, if you're in a studio apartment and you're going to expect to get everything done in those four walls, probably not going to happen or you're yeah. not going to be as effective. So, um, you know, this, this is going to be your workout area. This is going to be where you do your work. This is where you do – whatever else it is i gotcha so segmenting like, your spots i like that mm -hmm. yeah so like if you're uh for me like i have to like just i mean get out of bed like first thing i can't just if i just sit there i'm like well maybe i'll just hit snooze a few times which yeah. that's happened before yeah but of like, course um <laughs> if i can just get my feet on the floor i know i can like at least get to the bathroom and then it's like then i can get downstairs do you run through that process because i think this is actually i've had a ton of questions about the early stuff it's and it's huge. like people really struggle with it. So yeah, tell tell us your process if you're being soft. Well, yeah, because yeah, exactly. Because I'll I'll literally I'll wake up or the night before usually I'll, I'll hit the weather app and I'll see what I'm looking at here in the next morning because I go outside every morning. Got it. And then it happened the other day and I, I knew it was raining and then I was like, fuck, I don't want to lunge outside right now. Yeah. 
And then I was like, wow, are you fucking kidding me right now? It's just sprinkling outside. God, I love the rain. Yeah. And then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then I felt so much better after I did it. Not just because I lunged, but because I actually overcame my little bitch. Bitch ass self. Yeah. It was, yeah, like, it was like, this is so fucking stupid. Why am I doing this? But you, it literally is like an everyday battle with yourself. You yeah. Know? But like I come But down. I think people don't think that that's true. People that do these type of lifestyle things that they don't battle. It's just like easy for us for some mm-hmm. reason. But it's not true. No. Yeah. But now, like, I, I get dressed, I get downstairs, I'll drink a whole shaker of water. I, just, I don't know, that's just what I do. Yeah. And then, obviously, I get the pre going for a little sippage. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> and then I'll, you know, get out the door, hit the lunges, and then the ruck, and then... Uh, so you'll lunge first, not... Tra- if you're lifting weights, you don't lift weights first. You do conditioning no, first. No, I just fucking go. Interesting. Yeah. I, I don't think I knew that. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'll mix it up. Like, I'll ruck first. Yeah. So if I'm feeling kind of stiff and I yeah. don't want to just drop into a lunge right away. Sure. Um, but that, like, creates so much momentum that it makes everything else You're so much going bed easier. pre-conditioning. Yep. Immediately. Immediately. It's just like, a, it's kind of like you think of, like, a cold plunge or something like that. It's yeah, just like a real course. shock to the system that I need. Because, <clears throat> like, this morning was a good example, too, because I'm like, Man, I feel like fucking run down. It was like mm-hmm. one of those days where you show up to squat and you don't think you're going to squat something nasty. Yeah, and then yeah. you do. It ends up being one of your best days. That's, I like that. That's how it happened with me this morning. Mm. So I'm like, oh, that was a pretty fucking good workout. By the end, I felt awesome. So I, I always know. say like not very many people ever go, I wish I didn't go or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think you're always usually going to feel a little better. Well, with like squatting, you think like – you know, man, I feel like shit. The bar feels terrible. It's like just get to two twenty five. Yeah, John Bros talked a lot yeah. about that. And then and then make you'll see where you're gonna go from there. Yeah, so just get the ball rolling. I've seen some. I've had some rough warm ups. I've seen this guy. I've seen that. We've all had some rough yeah. warm ups and then up having amazing workouts. Yeah. There's no explanation for it either. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Trayvon. Um, so like one thing I think like to even go deeper on Danny's point is just talking about like then like when you have a system like dialing in like all those things. So like how Danny was saying, like, he gets up and he knows exactly that this is what he's going to do, and then he's going to go, like, he's going to go to this part of his house and do this thing. And so, like, I like, I like to have, like, systems set up where I, like, lay my clothes out the night before or mm-hmm. something like that. So same, I already same. know, I already know, wake up, I already know exactly what I'm grabbing. I, already, I just have to grab it off of the dresser or something like that. It's the Mallard fucking shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, that's full, it's folded up, ready to go. <laughs> so, like, you know, you already have that ready, or you might already have, like, your amino recovery, your pre-workout yep. shaken up, like, already in the fridge or something like that or like all that kind of stuff and like having all that set up so then your system can be even more flawless and everything in the morning is like super do you feel that too. stuff's like almost waiting on you too in a way like i wonder if that's part of the mentality of like i've already got it laid out of art so like you getting up's even easier because it's already done yeah yeah exactly i kind of like, like it, that it just like it gives you it's just like one like less like stressor or like a yeah. thing that could give you like anxiety in the morning you know what i mean because then like you're not rushing because <clears throat> then it's like let's say like you wake up late or something like that and you're like and you're running around trying to get ready to leave and you're like fuck i don't know what i'm wearing yet then you got to run to your closet or something you know r- run through shit and grab shit or something yep. like that it's just one less like thing that could give you like anxiety in the morning basically yep. so i, I like think it. like something like that is like really really helpful to have and like just in place and everything mm-hmm. and then also like to cole's point is um i started anabolic fasting again like last week so i'm loving the vegetables too right now yeah so i'm doing yeah i'm doing yeah the vegetables you feel a lot better don't you Trey? i feel ma- i feel like amazing i felt like a lot lot better like the past like took like couple weeks honestly so yep. like feeling really good well and you're a guy that on this podcast has talked about depressive stuff off and on and it's like when your brain's popping like this though that's got to help that on top of it right yeah 100 percent. no the training not having your insulin go yeah you know and all the mcdonald's yeah (laughs) i I know i know i know one thing i want to bounce off of trey talking about the system and how he has stuff uh waiting for him and stuff like that yeah is the food portion is i'm only fucking buying the shit that i need to eat Mm -hmm. so like i'm i don't have anything in the cabinets that's like lingering like oh there's chips in there like i i might go grab them now because i'm pretty hungry like i don't have any of that right now so all my only alternative right now is vegetables and I'm all in on vegetables. <laughs> you asked me, I'm a big. I'm a, you asked me right now what I'm big on and what like what, what I. Like well, right what are you now? big what, on? Right vegetables now. specifically. Traps I'm big vegetables. on fucking vegetables right now. Yeah, just specifically that. Brussels sprouts. On a Brussels big sprouts. Brussels sprouts. He's, he's really bullish on Brussels. Yeah, sprouts. really bullish on Brussels sprouts. <laughs> 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 your Brussels yeah. sprouts. Hey, I think there's a sleepers, bro. Especially if you know how to, you know, if you can cook Brussels sprouts, how do you cook them? 
Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll yeah. tell you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> shout out. Uh, what I'm, I'm going to come out and say this is not my recipe. I did not come up with this. I had <laughs> Michaela help me. She's on the same grind, too. I love she, that. Actually, hold on. <laughs> that real, helps out a ton. Real quick, yeah. talking about how being psycho and saying I love vegetables, she, it's starting to come out of her. Are you like, are you starting to wear like, on her? Well, n- well, now she's on the same grind of like she's trying to cut down because we got like is she wearing we a like can't re- what? is she wearing a can't relate shirt yet? She's close. <laughs> she's, close. <laughs> she's close right now. It's, it's really good. But uh, someone amazing. one one of her like friends texted and was like, "Hey, uh, are we drinking for like the natty?" Which like obviously no, but she's like can't do that got my got like she's like she's like gotta be a dog or something like that <laughs> i'm like okay wow. there you go. Let's go. And, and i looked at her i was like i was like how how good did that feel to say yeah so she's she's all and that's like transition for her right the hooks are yeah there. yeah, yeah which is cool because now we're like on the same grind it's like it's yeah. cool, whatever. well um, i'll tell you so like when you're <laughs> young like that right and you don't have kids that that's what me and rach used to do too we just don't buy it now it's like when you have yeah. kids especially older kids like mine like AG still trying to eat chips. I got to walk in the pantry to get my supplements. Dude, yeah. I got 15 bags of chips in there. And I got to talk shit to myself like, no, G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, you want your abs to be like Brick City, gangster, granite. You cannot eat these chips. Gangster. You do not want to be one day closer or one day further away. You want to be one day closer. And then I'll walk back out and I'll take a drink of water. And I'll walk past it and I'll like turn the light off and I'll be like, all right, so good. I think <laughs> like, I think granite. Yeah, it's granite. I think what's going to make <laughs> this year compared to last year even more successful was obviously Michaela's in the same grind because yeah. we were at the grocery store the other day and we were talking, we were trying to plan out our meals for the rest of the week of like what she's eating and I'm like helping her out and then she started talking about like what's our cheat meal going to be because Saturday she's actually got a photo shoot so Dope. we were she's like oh maybe we get a barrio and I'm like looked at her, I was like you know not gonna lie but I don't think we like deserve barrio like we Ooh. haven't like we haven't got it and this was the first time she looked she was basically like you know what you're right you like you're 100 percent right dude so she's in right now good for you <laughs> <Yeah>. she's <laughs> in. Uh, hey are you almost like yeah it's awesome yeah. <laughs> she's, yeah, it's, 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 but but real talk like the thing is and that's where I, this is a huge topic because significant others and people that you live with that aren't on board not that they're hating on you but aren't on board even if they're on board like this for a short period of time, everyone understands everybody better. Like Ray used to tell me like, do you really think I should be competing? You think there should be two of us in this household like this? I'm like, you know, especially towards the end where I'd be a total just dick. And I'm like, no, you're right. But her understanding that and being on it for periods of time, dude, helped immensely because she could understand, especially the last like three or four weeks when I was like really super lean, like she got it. So she didn't like, she didn't have like zero understanding, and I think that helped us because I'm an extremist, man. That like helped us a ton, so it's it's important. So yeah, so I don't know. so what's the recipe? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> oh so, yeah, sorry. So Brussels sprouts, they got like the little bags at like Giant Eagle or Kroger, or whatever. So yeah. you get those like frozen up. or like chop. Uh, uh they're like fr- it's not like man. frozen. Fresh. It's like the in the little fresh section. Yeah, yeah, it's not ahead. like in the freezer or whatever. It's just like out the bag. Yeah, you still yeah in the bag. Yeah, yeah. So get those, chop them up, right? Get the pan. Uh, tin foil, chop them up, put them on there, put some uh, olive oil mm-hmm. over top of them, and then I just switch up the seasoning. So uh, some days, like it might be like some like whatever random shit that I see first. Yeah. So, so I when I started liking <laughs> Brussels sprouts, you know what it was? It was mm. the fucking AF cooking show we did. Oh yeah, we did the Brussels sprouts in Brussels. the pan, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's when I started to to like Brussels sprouts, and then like then you started to like. Or you started to see them like pop up at restaurants as an appetizer a lot, like in them like cast iron. I always get them at the yeah. restaurants. Yeah, super wet. I wish I could cook them that good. Yeah, I right? can't. I yeah. can't ever get that. Well, they always put like fucking like <laughs> yeah, there's goat cheese shit on and, there. Yeah, like bacon and shit in there. And it's mm-hmm. Fucking yeah. good. Hyde Park has some wet ones too. They do. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Real good. Um, Shout out, Trey. Uh, <laughs> talk about other morning stuff because, like, were you ever a snooze guy? Um, like I definitely hit the snooze like sometimes yeah yeah yeah. but I always I but like I I know but like one thing I do like with my alarms though is I try to set my alarms early enough though where even if I was like to hit snooze I would Mm -hmm. still wake up like and be up like early still though 
Yeah, yeah. Especially now, because just because of where I live at now, like it's yeah. a little bit farther drive, so like I have to be, I have to like be a little bit more cautious of that in the morning and stuff like that. Dude. But like I've always like I've all I felt like I've always like had a system that like in the morning, like even back when I trained like at the pit, like in high school and stuff yeah. like that. Like I even then, like I still had a system like I do now, like where I had like my clothes laid out, or I knew like I was gonna wake up earlier in the morning and do this before my workout or something yeah. like before because I couldn't do that before I had to go to school or something like that. So what's interesting, you two guys specifically, cause I remember it wasn't that little bit like you're in high school doing that and yeah. then transition to college. You were driving from Ohio state doing that. Yeah. Like Danny was already a little bit older. Right. But like those two, like I remember you guys specifically like that you were doing that in extremely like in areas where people aren't that fucking disciplined. And obviously it's, it's transferred over. You guys are successful dudes. I think that has a lot to do with it. But the reality is like that decision is so difficult, but I'm wondering how I've been doing this for so long. Sometimes I think people think it's like, I don't even know how to like, but how did you just get to that? Like to make that, this is what in this time frame of my life, cause you guys both did it at an extremely young, I was already grown. Like we were doing 5 a.m., you know, I was already a grown dude with kids and stuff and business. Like you guys were doing this in like periods of time of your life that people don't fucking do that. Yeah. Um, well, like I fell like in love with it just because I was trying to get better for track. There you go. So like I was training for a sport and stuff like that. And then like that made me that that was like the motivating thing that made me like want to do it and want to commit to it just because I understood that, found that. I okay. understood that like it would benefit track like tremendously just because I knew and you like, were trying to get a scholarship. Yeah. Just because I okay. knew like strength and all that. kind of Like I just knew that's something that I was lacking in. So that was one thing that made me gravitate towards it. And then obviously then like once I fell into the system, though, and I saw like how much better other other like areas and qualities of my life improved though like yep. once i had a system in place in the morning then that's like when i was just totally like bought but the in. thing that put you over the edge initially that's what i was trying to get at like was what like, made you say this is me now and it was the track thing yeah, that was your that was so, your yeah. carrot yeah and it, it obviously worked <laughs> yeah cool. um i think i was just like trying to i mentally knew that like the four years while i was in college was like a time to go all out and that I needed to extract like everything I could like it within these four years to try to set myself up mm -hmm. for like the next like 10 years or whatever like that. So, I mean, but it, I think most people don't think about that till after the first four years. Yeah, because honestly, like <clears throat> I was if I like didn't take shit serious, I was just like spending money on a like at school for like no reason. Yeah. So like, like I was trying to get into like the good business program, which I knew was going to take like fucking a lot of mm -hmm. stuff because it's like hard. I'm not a natural like school guy, especially like accounting and shit like that. Shit was tough. So I knew that like, you <laughs> know, tra tra I knew that training in the morning and like being disciplined, like going to sleep at like nine or 10 mm. instead of like, you know, two or three on a random Tuesday for no reason was going to benefit me more. Next question. Oh. And I'm going to come to you for a second. I, yeah, I have something for that yeah. one too. Do you feel like you missed out on college because of it? Uh, no, because the way I was able to like, sure. I missed out on going out on Thursdays, but yeah. it's a fucking Thursday. I just go out Friday and Saturday anyways. So like answer. it wasn't, no, I don't, I don't think I missed out really on anything. I think I got to enjoy all of it. I like so. that. Trayvon, same, same question. Um, obviously you had less <clears> in college, but just in that time frame, like, yeah. So, so like, disciplined. I mean, I feel like I to so like from like my, I have like a weird perspective on the, all that because I feel like I completely missed out on like a total like that like college and like partying era of my life just because I went straight from you gotta remember like I went from high school to then running track and I was only there for a semester the whole semester I was there I was only focused on track yeah and so like I don't get me wrong, like, I partied in high school and stuff like that. But and then after that, then I dropped out, and not even a month later, I was, down in, I was down in Columbus. And then, obviously, you know exactly how busy I got once I was down here. Yeah. So that wasn't even something that was in, like, the picture at all. Yeah. So, like, I feel like that's, like, something that I completely, like, missed out in my life. Mm -hmm. um, not, like, saying I missed out on it, like, in that's a, bad, kind of in a bad way, though, because yeah. I don't think that I missed out on yeah. it in a bad because way. Because you, you go yeah. hard on the weekends now when you want. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, you're still yeah, – yeah, yeah. And so, like, I think that it, like, set – but I know, though, like, it set me up to exactly where I'm at now and everything. So, no, I don't feel like I missed out on it Do you feel like the NFT trips and stuff like that is, like, is like that's, oh, like, yeah. your thing? Like, yeah, like, like you're I think getting, it's... like, that that you missed in this now? 
Yeah, like I think like um like travel like now like I think like now like just traveling for anything like that's like even like if it's like business related or mm-hmm. anything it's like just to have that experience is like a lot of fun and I think that like s- traveling for stuff like that makes all of that worth it. 100%. You traded the other thing for this, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think about that with my life all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, Danny? Yeah, some good shit going on, fellas. <laughs> good. Good. Glad we're live today. Good, Daniel. <laughs> Uh, my like shift, cause I'm thinking of like, I was thinking back to like college or whatever, but for me, when things like started to get any like sort of like locked in was when I stopped playing baseball. Yeah, there you go. Be- well, it was just like, I played baseball like basically since I was like T-ball all the way up to through my freshman year. And so that was like all I knew. That's who I was. That was my identity. Identity. Yeah. Yeah. So that after I like knew I was going to stop playing. I was like, I got to fucking find something to replace this. And so that's, and it was like the perfect segue into like <laughs> not being a fat fuck anymore. <laughs> you know, Shout out to, yeah. So like, it was like one of those things that's, you know, it's on your bucket list. Like, Oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to run a triathlon someday. Like, and so that's what I fixated on. And then like, I think to some degree, which I think we all do <laughs> um, have like an obsessive, uh, compulsive of to, to for things like for lifting or lunging, AF, whatever it is. And so that's what – I think that's where that really started, like, coming into play for me. So that's why I went from, like, 215 to 168. And then that segued into old school, into, like, <laughs> not being small anymore yeah, and yeah. wanting to, like, actually get strong and know what I was doing. And that segued into CrossFit mm. – and Olympic weightlifting and stuff like that. So. I would I would argue that you can't be an outlier if you're not obsessed about something. Like that's no. why some dude tweeted me uh, yesterday about like I was talking about the 4 a.m. stuff on that thread. It was blowing up. Shout out to the thread blowing up, and it was like <laughs> the fucking uh um, And the dude was like, "Well, what's your day job?" And well, like, "What time do you work at?" I'm like, "Bro, I've been in business since '99. I work the hours that are needed. There is no clock in or clock out." So like, don't use that. Like, I can't. You can't use that as an excuse. Well, that th- makes me think about like when people say like, how do you live like a balanced life? Because you you talk about it too, right? I don't think. I don't yeah, I don't know. It truly exists. I keep going back and forth on that question. That's why I'm gonna cross my arms real quick. Mm-hmm. Is <laughs> because <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> because I think when I just intermixed it into my life, and I'll tell you the best way I got in balance is because we're here, right here in this town. This in the proximity to my house, to my family, like this is part of the balance there. The balance of you only work this many hours or this or that, the freedom and the integration is the balance, I think. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's what I was fighting for all this time, but I just didn't really realize it because once again, like in my head, I always see how I want to operate. I don't know why, but it's been like that my entire life. I've always been a daydreamer. Like what if I could just... (laughs) This, this the <laughs> you ready? <laughs> what if I could just drive the rolls down, you know, just kind of dip, dip around town, the gym, stop by day noche, mm-hmm. swing over to the, you know, to the school to get the kids if I need to, <laughs> dip over to watch AG play, you know, and just kind of operate like that. That's what's happening, and in and, and it's like made my life way easier. There's more balance with my family. They see me way more than me going from. Pataskla to Newark to the Airbnb to traveling still like all over the place. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think that part of it is like seeing the, how you can operate the balance of when you're young though, to build something is going to never be really in balance guys. Like there's no way to do outlier type shit and make it grow. If you're like everyone else, I'm sorry. It's just, I've never been like everyone else. I'd never wanted to be like everyone else. I never signed up to be that way. I signed up to do my own fucking thing and live the way I wanted to live. And that is going to take shit that no one else is willing to do. You have to be willing to do it. So the balance, like I I would say like if Rachel, if I could step till 11 or 12 and watch TV with her, but I can't. And she doesn't love that all the time because I I can't barely stay awake from a show because I got to go to bed by 10 Mm -hmm. to get up. and. But also I'm at dinner every night. I can take the kids where I need to take them. Like there's, there is a trade off for some of the stuff. Right. And we'll have plenty of our time to travel and do all our stuff, but it's like, so there is some give and take a lot of spots and really was early in my career because it was more so on the take from my part. But I still think like an actual, like direct balance is virtually impossible. Yeah. 
you know what, so. do you, what do you think about like setting like boundaries and stuff like that because i keep thinking about like the just having conversations with people that are in the more like traditional like clock in clock mm -hmm. out sort of thing is like it's hard for them sometimes to conceptualize why you would be working or doing something on uh, the weekend or outside hours i never understood the opposite yeah because my, my whole life was the other way so like when i would deal with corporate people back in the mp days and i'd call them on sunday like I called the guy from Vitamin Shop on Sunday to do something. He's like, "What the fuck are you calling me?" I'm like, because I need it done. <laughs> the fuck you think I'm calling you for? <laughs> but he was, but he was like, "Yo, I'm off." I'm like, yeah. "Oh wait, you think that way? I don't fucking think that way." It needed done at eight o'clock on Sunday. So yeah, that that part is was difficult for me too. Mm -hmm. But I, I also realized that I just really don't talk. Like I don't really bring up stuff like that anymore. Like I quit all that a long time ago because yeah. it. it creates all these weird conversations <laughs> does, but yeah. but yeah understanding that when you sign up to try to totally take over your own life it has to be done just when it needs to be done it doesn't have a time frame to it now if you do a good enough job of it then your time frame gets more open mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean and you get more efficient yeah. but it is a tricky transition though I would say I think uh, one of the things you uh, talked about like in that tweet and thread and stuff like that was that you had no other option like training at 4 a.m. was the only option that you had because of like the kids and stuff like that yeah. and there's plenty of guys like in the crew who like 100%. have to make their job at like 7 o'clock in the morning yeah like there's no way that they were gonna wake up at 530 drive an hour to work work eight hours or and then, 10 and then least, yeah. have the enthusiasm and energy to go get a great workout in there's Not no happening. way recipe for disaster because here's the thing is that might work when you're single yeah as soon as you have a kid as soon as you have a wife as soon as you have any other obligations i don't care if it's fucking co-ed softball something's going to take you away from your workout mm -hmm. and to me i was like i cannot allow in my life for a distraction to change it's my job so i should think this way but to some degree it's all of our jobs to take care of ourselves i cannot allow anything to distract this because if it's in line, everything's in line. And so I think that, that you know, because I started at 7 because I used to have clients from 5 to 7. But there was no one in the gym at 7 because a lot of clients couldn't because they were going to work. And then it went to 5 and then obviously 4 like a decade ago. And, dude, my whole career jumped once it got earlier and earlier. I was just way more effective. So I don't know. I think that that – I think it's a <laughs> – I think it's a fantasy to think you're going to be as enthusiastic – after going through the distractions of life and the stresses of life, this is just my opinion after, cause I think that's why motherfuckers are on their phone the whole time at the fucking gym. Well, and there's shit going on. You only have so much bandwidth. I mean, if Dude, you just think yeah. your, your shit is like a meter, like you, I mean, you're going to hit the top by the end of the day. And then you're like, bro, yes. Well, I, don't feel like doing fucking I would AI. say like, <clears throat> I don't really necessarily feel like an anxious person, but I think part of it is because I do that in the morning. I think I get it all out. Yeah. I get on my competition. I get on my fucking rage. I try to balance that what violent and peaceful type of dude. I was a fucking angry kid. I, I needed a punching bag in my house. I used to punch wall like holes and shit. Like I need that in my life. And I realized that at a really young age. And I think that that probably contributing to me, me being more normal in a regular basis, which is probably why I'm more chill after that. It's, it's necessary, but I think there's a, a version of that that everybody needs. I think it's just like human nature. Mm -hmm. So the morning shit, you just got to commit and say fucking rip the Band-Aid off and do it. Yeah, it's real interesting now because whenever I was in school, a lot of people didn't understand it. Like obviously like I was – That's why uh, I asked about it. I was that. like going to bed, and then I would wake up, and my roommates would still be Still be, be up. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, that, that was some great conversation. Yeah. Uh, but I think now since I'm 25 – all my friends are now in the workplace job. They got stuff going on. Some of them got kids. They now understand, like, I, I, I get why you wake up. Like, they're not waking up to go train early because it's the only time, time. they have. Yeah. Like, they're not going to do that, like, at 5 p.m. They just can't. Well, well, good, then. I was just going to say, and when you have kids and you have other things that come in your life, it makes it basically mandatory. That's what, that's what, yes. I, li that's what I like about it now is because it's like, you don't have it's a choice. do or don't. Like, yeah. This is your time. You got to fucking make it happen. So do it. But I would say most people's lives are like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, 90% of people's lives, they, there is a mandatory time. It's just whether or not you're going to admit to that or not. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. your fantasy of what time you think you're going to get it done. How soft you are. Ain't yeah. fucking happening. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that's part of the, pro I think that's part of the main problem. Mm -hmm. 
but it's like but once again it's comfortable what even jack elaine said it's easier to stay in the warm bed but you should get up and grab the cold steel oh. <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> yeah shout out jack elaine that was the guy <laughs> um so i think that the mindset hearing these things hearing how it worked out for you guys hearing how it worked out for me like we all been doing it for a really long time it's like i want to i want to start to convince people that i think they're fucking up and there's a lot of really strong guys and great athletes that don't work out super early. I get that. That's that's going to happen. But, I mean, I think the majority of people should give it a try. I don't care if you're walking your fucking dog and you're listening to some motivational material. Like, that's a start. And then you do, like, one push-up. Well, and it's not you're going from 9 a.m. to 4 a.m. right away. Make it, no. like, a, you know, yeah. it could be just trickle it down. It literally could be 20 minutes yeah. earlier than you normally get up. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, we don't need no extremes <laughs> out here. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't need you falling asleep at your car because you can't. The, the other question I got a bunch from yesterday from my tweet blowing up is <laughs> <laughs> tweet me Trey yeah. uh, is um, tweet me Trey. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love it oh it's so fun uh, anyway so one of the a lot of the things I got was but I'm really tired in the afternoon and I've had some people send me exactly what they're eating because I know why they're tired it's because of what they're eating and I'm like don't tell me what you think, I, and these aren't people that are on the app, I don't believe, because the shit they're sending back ain't nothing I ever told them to mm -hmm. eat. I'm like, don't tell me what you think I want to hear, which they're probably still telling me a good version of it, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm like, but send me what you're doing, and, I'm, and I can, I know exactly why you're so tired. It's the whole lifestyle. That, that's what I'm trying to get at people is that I wore the whoop thing, and it told me my sleep was 97 to 99%. I didn't make this up. I used to tell people and they used to look at me twisted that my sleep is better than your sleep <laughs> because I'm exhausted when I get there because I fucking put it out all day mm -hmm. and my nutrition has been pretty dead on. Something is dead on. And when I go to sleep, I'm a fucking sleep. Ask my wife. I don't know where the fuck I'm at. I'm out. <laughs> and when I get up, I'm ready to fucking rock. <laughs> yep. So my point is that if you feel that way and you cannot recover or potentially accomplish things like this, it's probably not just that. It's probably the lifestyle. And that's what I've been trying to teach the people is that I've been afforded this lifestyle because of the other factors. I don't think I'm fucking unbelievable dude. I just think I figured out how I could balance that. And that balance has to be that you have to be about these other parts or you can't recover. You're going to be tired. You're going to want to go to sleep. All of that. That's why you feel that way. 100 yeah. percent i get it but that's why i've been asking that question more because then it's like that's exactly why you feel that way and that's what people i think need to understand yeah. no, no, i'm just i'm laughing because i'm thinking of the corporate environment right now yeah it's like in the middle of the day it's like well of course you're gonna feel like that you're eating fucking chips and a sub and then you eat it or drink a fucking monster and then you go to bed at 11 o'clock one night and then you go to bed at midnight yeah. the next and it's like all this inconsistency of I know the salad and breadsticks are free at Olive Garden, but you're going to be crashed out at three. Dude, that rant you had was amazing. When you so did that. fucking good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why don't you give us one? Yeah, the corporate go, environment. Go this ahead. is amazing. Yeah. All right. By you guys Corgi. ready? Yeah. 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 Here this is like. Try, 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 yeah, try yeah. Some yeah, yeah. yeah right. please. Right. <clears throat> a little flip. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> no this, will be, this will be one of those. Uh, <laughs> give me something like I, in between I, little flip and the thing you had yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got All right, here we go. Three. Two. We're still live, right, Kyle? All right, good. We're still live. All right, listen. Every client I've sat down with, and I would say, hey, tell me how you eat. Do you eat good? They say, I eat pretty good. I go, all right, well, tell me some of the problems. They'd say, well, this is part of the problem. I get up. I don't work out in the morning, and I'm usually running a little behind. I didn't have time to make my food, so I just go straight to work. I understand that. No problem, I say. They get there, and they're looking at the coffee. They're like, you know what? I'm not feeling real good. I'm drinking me some coffee. And guess what? I walk by Bob's desk. He's got one of them candies. He's got one of them candies on his desk. He's got the little cream in the middle of it. I'm going to grab me a couple of those real quick. Get to my desk, eat a couple of them candies, drink that coffee. Feeling pretty good for about an hour and 27 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I get there, and then all of a sudden, it's 10. It's 10 a.m., there's bagels in the meeting. You know what? I love bagels and cream cheese. I'm going to get me one of those. 
But then by the time noon hits, I'm starting to get tired because the bagel and cream cheese and the candies from fucking Bob's desk got me crashed out and the coffee ain't working no more. And then my friend said, hey, Olive Garden, we should go to Olive Garden today. Olive Garden has the free fucking breadsticks and the salad. Let's get that. Bet. Let's go there. We go to fucking Olive Garden. <laughs> Shout out Trey. We go to Olive Garden and I'm smashing these breadsticks. I'm smashing this, but I'm, I'm super setting it with salad. So I'm feeling good about that. But I went ahead and got the linguine or whatever the fuck that is. And then on top of it, and because when I got back to work at one o'clock, I'm certain I'm feeling pretty good because I had some camaraderie with my, with my people and all that. I'm getting, but I'm, but I'm, but my insulin's starting to crash. It's starting to build. It's starting to crash. And then I superset it with a monster. So it puts me up. So now I've had the candy from Bob's desk. I've had uh, the bagel in the fucking meeting with cream cheese. I've had one thing of coffee. I've fucking monster set that with breadsticks, salad, and fucking linguine. And then at the peak, as the monster wears off, I got the crash at 3 o'clock where I'm at my desk and I'm like, I can't, I can't keep my eyes awake. And I'm looking at Danny and saying, Danny, slap me. And Danny slaps the shit out of me, and he says to me, G, <laughs> you got to get your life together. Because then, I'm going home after Danny slaps the shit on me. I'm a little bit awake. I've got an adrenaline rush, and I didn't make dinner, and I'm busy. I got to take my kids to practice. And then I finally get home at 7.30 p.m., and I can't believe how fucking hungry I am. And everything that's not tied down is going down this hatch. Jalapeno potato chips, cashews fucking uh honey buns from the fucking uh grocery store all of it and then i wonder why i can't get up in the morning <laughs> that's good if your life is like that please let me help you <laughs> <laughs> that was so <laughs> on point was so good, yeah. I, I, i'm not trying to be a dick i'm just telling you what i heard all the time oh no, that's yeah. like based literally what it is that's yeah good. Yeah. Wow. You like to slap that, shit out of me? That was fucking amazing. <laughs> that was yeah. great. Uh, yeah, for those of you wondering, this was uh, the Call of Duty model for Tucson <laughs> practice. So, <laughs> shout out to Hans Zimmer. All right. Uh, uh, I'm going to need a second. You guys take over. Daddy Zimmer. Yeah. <laughs> that was, a, that that was, was absolutely great. But I think that's really impactful for people to hear, though. Well, because that's the not how to get abs part. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> because part of that is is like planning. Part of that is understanding. And I think I've been literally on like a mission my whole life of like just telling people, like have, helping people with education of what they're supposed to fucking know what to eat. Yeah. They don't know. And so I sound like a fucking dick. I probably piss some people off. But then also they probably went, fuck, that's pretty close to how I operate. And no wonder I don't feel good or my body doesn't look the way I want or my confidence is, you know, and they don't have a Danny slap shit out of them. I just slap the shit out of them. So mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably uh, people are probably like, man, this fucking guy. But I'm. Mean, it's kind of true. Though. Hear that though. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. true. We get, we have anything else after that, or is that I mean, a good I, wrap? I, I think that's a good <laughs> yeah, wrap okay. up. Honestly, yeah, I think anything else we can hit up in the next episode. All right, sounds yeah. good. All yeah, right, <laughs> roundtable podcast. I'm your boy Corey G at Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed and the Graphic Gangster himself Cole Susak. We are out.